Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. Much smaller and weaker than the others of his kind, a Pachyrhinosaurus named Patchy will have to fight against the largest predators of the Cretaceous to become the leader of the herd and make sure that everyone survives. Today we will recap the story of the 2013 film Walking with Dinosaurs. While his parents leave on a trip to Europe, Ricky and his sister Jade are sent to the home of their uncle Zach, who lives in southern Alaska. On the way, the bored teenager asks what they are going to do, and the uncle shows him the tooth from a Gorgosaurus that he keeps in the glove compartment, saying that they are going after the rest of the fossil, that the boy scoffs at Zach's interest in dinosaurs, claiming that this is kid stuff and that he doesn't like the idea of digging up dead things. Unlike her older brother, Jade seems very interested in prehistoric creatures and decides to go out with her uncle to explore the woods while Ricky waits in the car. Bored, the boy decides to pass the time by playing with his cell phone, but as soon as the others leave, he hears someone whistling and begins to look for the source of the sound, and realizes that it is actually a kind of talking crow that is calling him. As if this wasn't strange enough, the bird hands over the Gorgosaurus tooth and says that the object tells a very interesting story, asking the boy to hold the tooth to be taken to a very distant past, when dinos still roamed the earth. As soon as Ricky does this, the tooth begins to glow and the crow changes shape, transforming into a rather strange Alexornis bird named Alex. In this new form, he starts flying towards the end of the Cretaceous period and lands next to a dinosaur to peck the remains of food on its tongue, almost being devoured by the gigantic predator. After almost turning into someone's dinner, Alex starts flying towards a herd of Pachyrhinosaurus and lands on a female, who coincidentally is the mother of his good friend Patchy. Being smaller than his siblings, the little Pachyrhinosaurus can barely catch the food that the mother chews for her young. Hungry, Patchy tries to pass by his brothers to get some food, but Rock, the eldest, won't let him reach the food, saying that his share was delicious. At that moment, the little Pachyrhinosaurus sees a heap of food outside the nest and decides to go there to eat, but without anyone noticing, a Truton infiltrates the herd and advances towards Patchy, who is distractedly talking to Alex. As soon as it sees the predator, the bird flees and recommends that the youngster do the same, but the youngster thinks the bird is just trying to steal his food and ignores the warnings, the predator manages to grab him by the head and Patchy is not devoured whole because his father shows up and confronts the Truton, preventing it from escaping with the baby. Startled by the Pachyrhinosaurus's roar, the predator throws Patchy away and runs out of the nest, but because of the bite, a gigantic hole is formed in his head. A sign that will leave him marked in history. After getting up, the little dinosaur sees a gigantic herbivore passing by and decides to follow it, stopping at the wrong place and time and getting hit by a pile of Mesozoic age dirt. Nevertheless, Patchy doesn't mind and goes running after a kind of dragonfly that is devoured by a small mammal. Curious to find out what is outside the nest, the dinosaur approaches and asks if they can be friends, but the other animal senses the foul stench emanating from him and runs away from Patchy, who begins to chase the poor thing. During the race, they pass a gigantic ankylosaurus that distracts the Pachyrhinosaurus, causing it to veer off course and end up in a valley full of other animals. While exploring the place, the little guy sees a baby of another species being attacked by three Hesperonychus and decides to intervene, telling the predators to look for someone his own size. But of course, this was a very bad idea. Because of this, the predators unravel and the little dinosaur escapes, causing Patchy to become the new target of the mutant quails. Frightened, the Pachyrhinosaurus begins to run toward the nest until it is picked up by its mother, who scares off the predators and takes the clumsy baby back to the nest. Safe and sound, Patchy continues to grow, but cannot keep up with the strength of his brothers and is unable to cut down a small tree to feed himself, while Rocky and the others can demolish everything with extreme ease. One day, the two brothers are playing when another Pachyrhinosaurus named Major arrives to challenge Bulldust, but is easily defeated. Seeing this scene, the two Pachyrhinosaurs feel inspired and decide to start a head-butting contest, but despite being confident, Patchy is easily defeated by his brother every time. After another failure, the cub goes for a walk and meets Junie, a small female Pachyrhinosaurus who is delighted with the hole in his head. Despite their interest, they can't talk for long because the girl's mother shows up and forbids her to talk to dinosaurs from another herd. Over the next few days, Patchy keeps going back to try to find Junie in the same place, but always gets frustrated because she never shows up. After four days, Alex finally decides to tell his friend that she had left for the south because of the Great Migration. Eager to see her again, he begins to insist that the herd do the same, so that he can finally see Junie again. But as soon as they start marching, they are hit by a storm and have to run into the forest for shelter. Thinking they are safe, the group continues walking south, but because of the summer, the foliage is dry and begins to catch fire as soon as it is struck by lightning, forcing the Pachyrhinosaurus to run to avoid being barbecued on a spit. 
Desperate, the large herbivores run to the open ground together with the other species, but realize that they have been cornered when they reach the edge of the forest, where a pair of gorgosaurs try to grab the desperate dinosaurs. Upon seeing the predators, Patchy's father makes the herd change direction and go around the burned forest, but halfway, a tree falls in front of the two, preventing them from advancing and forcing Bulldust to return to save them. The mother keeps running with her other children without realizing that she is heading straight for a trap, where she is ambushed by the other Gorgons. Alone with the babies, the mother Pachyrinosaurus calls out to Taurus who runs to help the rest of the family, but as soon as he leaves, a third Gorgosaurus appears and begins chasing Rocky and his brother. Desperate, they run under a tree trunk hoping not to be sniffed, but soon the predator manages to find them and almost snatches Patchy. At this point, Bulldust returns and begins to fight with all his might to defend his children, but ends up being defeated and turns into Gorgosaurus dinner in front of the two brothers. When the flames are extinguished, the Lost Brothers duo begin searching for the rest of the herd and find Major leading the group, confirming that his mother and his other siblings have also been devoured. Being the last, Bulldust returns and begins to fight with all his might to defend his children, but ends up being defeated and turns into Gorgosaurus dinner in front of the two brothers. Following the Major, Patchy spots Juni and tries to talk to her, however the girl follows her mother again and leaves him talking to himself, causing Rocky to start teasing him. Suddenly, the wind begins to blow through the hole in the youngest's head and emit a whistle that leaves Juni spellbound, but as usual, they can't talk for long, because the girl's mother arrives and pulls her away from the brothers. After much walking, they finally reach Ambush Alley, a place where the Gorgons usually attack anything that moves, including pterosaurs. Despite their little arms, these predators are great strategists and plan to use the narrow valley to ambush the Pachyrinosaurs, thus separating the slower ones from the group. As soon as the Gorgosaurs take action, the entire herd starts to run around the creek, but when they reach the shore, they become afraid to follow and end up giving the predators the gap they needed to separate the weaker ones, including Rocky, Patchy, and Juni. Trapped at the water's edge, the girl falls and can't swim back, which makes the two brothers agitated and causes them to fall into the creek as well. As Alex follows the trio through the air, they are pulled ever harder by the current, until after much effort, Juni and Patchy manage to cling to a rock. But when Rocky does the same, his size makes the trio slip and they fall back into the current, being carried further and further away. When the waters finally calm down, Alex starts looking for Patchy and finds him passed out on the edge of the beach, along with Rocky and Juni, who is injured and quite hungry. Worried, the little Pachyrinosaurus approaches them to try to help them, until suddenly the ground begins to shake when a huge flock of Edamontosaurus passes by, leaving all three impressed by the incredible size of the creatures. Believing that they are going to a feeding area, the Pachyrinosaurus chicks decide to join the gang and start walking together with the herbivores, but Juni feels a lot of pain in her leg and ends up staying behind with Patchy, who decides to wait until she recovers. Suddenly, a group of crabs crawl out of the sand and start attacking the defenseless couple, but soon a flock of pterosaurs appear to eat the crustaceans and they take the opportunity to escape before they become the main course. After a whole day of walking alone, the Pachyrinosaurs are looking for the rest of the herd in the middle of the forest when Patchy ends up tripping over the tail of a sleeping Gorgosaurus. Despite the jolt, the predator doesn't wake up and the baby slowly starts to move away. But before it even gets to a safe distance, the demented one starts to run all awake and wakes up the beast that is lurking. Unaware of the danger they are in, they continue walking quietly, until a trio of Kairos notes appear and start ambushing them. While the ancestral chickens try to peck at the two, the girl realizes that they have no teeth and Patchy manages to scare them away on a bite-by-bite -bite basis, however, the Gorgosaurus finally decides to show up and starts attacking the Kairos notes, giving the gap for the couple to escape before they become the targets. A little further on, they encounter a beautiful Aurora Borealis and begin to follow it, until they finally find the herd again, allowing the couple to finally meet their relatives and spend the winter with their family. When spring begins, everyone marches back north, and they continue to do so one year after another, while little Patchy grows bigger and bigger until he reaches adulthood. Now that he is mature, the young Pachyrinosaurus must participate in the annual courtship in order to gain the attention of a female, which only serves to make him anxious, since he finds the head-butting competition a great waste of time. Since he thinks it is an important tradition, Major tries to convince Patchy to challenge him and perhaps take his place as the alpha male, but the young one says he has just eaten and does not want to fight on a full stomach. At that moment, Rocky appears and takes his brother's place, charging at the Major and leaving Patchy looking foolish in front of Juni, who admires the courage of her future brother-in-law. Despite being an experienced fighter, Major begins to have difficulty fighting and ends up losing to the young and fierce Rocky, who becomes the new leader of the herd. 
For Patchy's nightmare, the brother's first act as alpha male is to claim the right over Juni, and as if all this betrayal was not enough, Rocky still demands to be treated as his superior from now on. Heartbroken, Patchy is starting to have a tough time in the herd, but the rest of the group isn't much different, as Rocky has no sense of direction, deviating from the known route and forcing everyone to pass through frozen rivers in the middle of spring. Realizing the danger they are in, Patchy starts yelling for Juni to warn Rocky, and she replies that it won't do any good, because she won't be heard. Even knowing this, the Pachyrinosaurus tries to convince the rest of the gang to return and is completely ignored, but only until the moment when the ice begins to give way and some of the members fall into the frozen water, turning into lizard popsicles. Desperate, the herd begins to disorganize and Patchy runs back to the shore, shouting for everyone to follow him if they want to survive. But this doesn't make Rocky any happier. Thanks to Patchy's leadership, everyone manages to reach the edge and get off the ice, but they end up huddled on the shore until Patchy has the idea to cut down some trees to clear the way, allowing everyone to be safe and to finally get back on the trail. With this he saves the herd, but Rocky is not at all happy and accuses his brother of trying to steal his leadership, vowing revenge when they meet. Despite the threat, Patchy doesn't take it seriously and continues to lead the rest of the herd to safety, but Rocky finds them a few miles ahead and doesn't miss the chance to challenge his brother. Peaceful as always, the younger one refuses to fight and decides to just keep walking, but ends up falling for his older brother's taunts and challenges him to a head-butting contest for the right to keep Juni, saying that he can keep the rest of the herd if he wants. Before the battle begins, Patchy roars and Rocky immediately moves toward his brother, starting the fight while Juni and Alex watch. With their tons of muscle, the two Pachyrinosaurs begin an insane headbutting contest, but because he is smaller, Patchy takes the worst of it and is pushed into a crater by his brother. This causes a tree trunk to fall on him and leave him with no way to escape. With Patchy motionless, Rocky throws him out of the gang and returns to lead the group, except for Juni who stays behind to try to help him, but as soon as she notices this, the alpha male returns and prevents her from interfering, ordering the girl to join the gang and leave the traitor behind. After everyone leaves, Alex starts pecking his friend to get him up, but Patchy is down and decides to just surrender to the approaching scavengers, allowing them to start biting him while the bird tries to motivate him. With no idea what else to do, Alex reminds them that Bulls sacrificed himself for a reason and says that Patchy cannot leave in vain. At that moment, the Pachyrinosaurus remembers Juni and decides that he can't give up until he is sure that she will be safe. Motivated, Patchy finally manages to remove the log and scare off the dinosaurs that were on top of his body, leaving him free to move again. Determined to get back to Juni, he starts running full tilt towards the herd, where he finds the girl thoughtfully in the middle of the crowd. When she sees Patchy, she says that she was worried and thinking of coming back to help him, but the boy interrupts her saying that he has something he has wanted to talk about since they were little. Just as he is about to do so, the other dinosaurs start running and Patchy immediately recognizes the place where they are, ambush alley. Yeah guys, Rocky has led everyone into a trap. Panicked by the presence of the Gorgosaurs, everyone starts running wildly towards the stream, except Rocky, who stays behind to face one of the predators. Despite being extremely strong, the leader of the herd is at a disadvantage and is easily defeated, but Patchy refuses to let his brother be devoured and goes after the group of predators along with the rest of the herd, determined to fight to the end. Led by Juni, the other Pachyrinosaurs unite to confront the Gorgons while Patchy confronts their leader, who begins trying to grab his prey's neck. In the midst of the confusion, the cursed opponent sticks his arm through the hole in Patchy's head and ends up getting stuck, only managing to get free after the Pachyrinosaurus shakes his head and breaks his bone in two. With a fractured arm, the Gorgosaurus ends up losing his balance and receives several headbutts that cause his teeth to fly away, including the one that will be found by Uncle Zack millions of years in the future. Defeated, the Gorgon leader retreats with his little arm all stumpy while the other predators are driven off by Juni and the herd. After his brother's victory, Rocky stands up in disbelief and decides to pass the leadership of the gang to Patchy, who finally declares himself to Juni while leading the group safely south. A few years later, the couple builds their own brood that is constantly attacked by Truden, but Patchy is always present and does everything possible to protect the eggs from the predator that opened the hole in his head. After he scares off the bugged chicken, Juni shows up and they watch together as their first chick is born. With his new family, Patchy lives out the rest of his days in peace, leaving behind the time when he was just a helpless little Pachyrinosaurus and becoming the protector of the pack until the end of the dinosaur age. In the future, Ricky finishes hearing Alex's story and decides to accompany his uncle and sister on the dig, helping them unearth the fossil of that Gorgosaurus that Patchy defeated millions of years ago. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below.
And if you like the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.